The life of this successful New England prognosticator lies much deeper than his hard shell. It's the stuff that dreams are made of. It's the story of a chance meeting and a strong friendship. One would think that they met under a moonlit sky. Bordering on obsession. He wouldn't go anywhere without that cohab. From the water's edge to the bitter edge. It wasn't always free drinks and red carpets for Doug. And back again. Claims were meant to be eaten, not to predict the weather. It was getting out of hand. He needed to be protected. This is the story of Doug and Johnny, a cohog and his whisperer. Oh, there were headlines. A friendship that even Mother Nature couldn't predict. So we thought we hit tourism gold, but instead we hit dirt. Join me as we explore the tragedy and the triumph of Doug the Cohog on tonight's Behind the Moss. Doug the Quahog has it all. Money, fans, magazine covers, fame and glory, even statues erected in his honor. He's the envy of every mollusk and every man. But how did this obscure mollusk launch from the dinner plate right into the spotlight? How did he get his call out? Well, Johnny was out with his friends, more like savages with their bare sweat and talk about women in sports. But Johnny, being a more thoughtful man, looked over and saw that the Quahog was trying to speak to him. Literally trying to speak. He just didn't know at that time what he was saying. There was something about him, it, or it. I, I, there was something there. It was almost like he was talking to me. The other guys are eating theirs, and I'm just staring at this thing. Should be delicious, but I, just, I couldn't do it. Well, from that night forward, Johnny was obsessed with that quahog. They're close, very, very close. It's a bit concerning, actually, as his girlfriend. I just, I never understood. He was always smiling at it. He was always touching it. He was always you know, taking it everywhere, doing whatever with it. It was, it was really tough. I mean, it was almost like he was having a relationship with the Quahog and not with me. It became so intense that Johnny had no room in his life for love. Put it this way, one time I was so excited. I was going to bring Johnny home to meet my parents because that's what you do in a relationship. And he brought Doug with him. I mean, how crazy is that? He brought a Quahog home to meet my parents. Who does that? You know, the movies was the last, last step. I mean, when I went to go grab some popcorn and he smacked my hand away so that I wouldn't bother Doug, that was it. I just, I couldn't take it anymore. Well, there is one really great thing that came out of the date at the movie theater that night. Is that Johnny? Are you for real? I mean, they went everywhere together. It became an epic romance. <laughs> Bromance, if you will. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Sitting in his living room, Johnny got the message loud and clear. Good morning, Melissa Chartrand, Channel 18 weather weekend outlook. And if you're heading to the Cape this weekend, other than our sunny disposition, What's that, Doug? I hate to say it, plan on rain. Pack those umbrellas and rain gear what? from Provincetown right it, through to it's, Chatham. It's not going to be Gray cloudy? Sky, scattered showers. Our mid Cape area. You can right predict here, the due weather? To the pressure system. You can expect thunderstorms, Sweet. heavy wind, downpours. You best plan to spend a lot of time <laughs> indoors this weekend. So wrong, lady. So wrong. So. You know, we began to show off a little bit. I mean, he could talk about the weather and he was right. It was, it was our ticket to the top. Like he actually knew what Doug was saying, but he did. Well, we know it's cloudy out, but he says it's gonna be sunny. Much like one of my book signings, people came from miles around to see them. Another picture-perfect Cape Cod day. 
Atlanta? Well, we heard about this clairvoyant clam, and we know people will plan their vacations around the weather forecast, so we said, maybe we go get the clam, he does a weather forecast, we do it on the first day of summer, we call it Quahog Day, and we got one security person because we knew he sort of had this following and we wanted to keep the crowds under control, but um, after that first prognostication, boy, his fame grew. People could make their plans, it would be a beautiful thing. And they could get all the information at capecodchamber.org. Look, I'm a professional. This is my job. I do security for a living. I've been doing it all my life. And I've never, ever seen anything like Doug the Cohog. I work with Ted Danson, El DeBarge, Scott Bayo, but Doug the Cohog, he was different than all of them. He just exploded. I, I don't know what's going on here. They, they, they got some magic potion or what? I mean, you talk to a Cohog and all of a sudden you're the man. I don't understand it. It was getting out of hand. He needed to be protected. We were living the life. All the late nights, the ladies, the red carpet, limo rides. It was like a free buffet all the time. Oh, unbelievable. That clam to tango. He was making headlines, going to red carpet events, getting ladies by the dozen. Heck, I even got a calendar deal. Good times, man. Just good times. But the good times didn't last. So we did Quahog Day, and he prognosticated good weather, but it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained. We've spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on sophisticated equipment to hone in on the intricacies of predicting regional weather patterns, and people are going to listen to this clam? Clams are meant to be eaten, not to predict the weather. These were dark days for Doug and Johnny. No one listened. No one cared. No one believed. No one cared. Oh, I said that, didn't I? But no one did. W where is everybody? Getting it wrong was tougher on this duo than anyone could have imagined. It was awful. I couldn't get him out of his shell. Dark days indeed. I thought Doug was gonna clam up forever. Oh, there were headlines. After that first year that Doug was wrong, things got ugly. Real ugly. The first co-hug day when Doug blew it, I wasn't that upset. Sweet justice. We were going to have Johnny and Doug for dinner, literally, if the prognostication was wrong. We kind of liked the little guy, but we heard about this other clam out there, Jerry the Cherry Stone, and he had quite a following too. We were trying to hang in there with Doug. Giving Johnny and Doug another chance was a big gamble for this small community. I don't know if Doug got his groove back or Johnny cleaned his ears out and could finally understand what Doug was saying, but once they got it together, they were getting it right, and it was magic. Doug was back, and he was even bigger than Bieber. So we decided to hang in there with Doug, and we're really glad we did. To have Doug nail it, to get the weather right for all of Cape Cod, for all the visitors, all the people out there, all the other cohogs out there. It's, it's unbelievable. Un unbelievable. With the dark days behind them, Johnny and Doug went on to prognosticate successfully for many years to come. It was a tale that even I, the great T.M. Murphy, couldn't write. And for that I say, well done, boys. Well done. That's all for this edition of Behind the Mollusk. Thank you and good night.
Stand back. Your idol for butter, I'm telling you. I saw a guy with butter in the audience. A big stick of butter. Yeah. Doug saying he knew it was going to be windy today for this interview, but you know, he also knew the sun would be in and out. But what? Yes, I know. Yeah. It's been a long winter, so get this done, get it done. All right, that's a wrap. Let's go.